How's it going everyone? It is Drigo. We're going to be talking about the live action version of One Piece and I'm just going to kind of give my thoughts about the series as a whole. This video will contain spoilers for the whole season of One Piece. First off, I wasn't even really checking this out just to watch One Piece. I just know that the next live action version that Netflix is doing is My Hero Academia and I'm like terrified about that one because like One Piece, I like it, it's it's fine, but like My Hero, I really, really love and I'm just like, I don't want you touching it. Don't you dare mess it up. On a whole, I actually did really enjoy this series. I think it is very good at honestly adapting it. There is some parts where they obviously change some things, but I feel, you know, in the most part, it still keeps the story mostly intact. I think starting off, I'm just going to talk about the live action versions of these characters, because in particularly for One Piece, dang, you had a very tall task of trying to cast someone that can embody this role that has been, you know, a voice actor in the role for, you know, literally a thousand episodes. I think for me personally, I actually really like the live action version of Zoro. And in my mind, I'm still like imagining, you know, the voice actors voices for them. He did a really good job of, you know, embodying Zoro. And I think he was a really good pick. I like all of his like random mannerisms and how he's just kind of annoyed and pissed off at everyone. And even with him fighting Mihawk later in the season, I feel like they did that very well too because he kind of embodied that, you know, Zoro, I'm going to beat this guy. And, you know, when he gets defeated, I really liked how, you know, he's like, I'm not going to lose again, Luffy. I'm going to be your first mate. And I think the second person I liked probably the most for the live action version would be Luffy. The guy playing the live action version of Luffy, like dang, he really does have, you know, the personality of Luffy on lock. It's not to say that like every single line of dialogue is perfect to what it is in the show. I feel like certain scenes aren't as impactful as they were in the show. In particular, the first one that comes to mind for me is, you know, Nami, you know, crying, you know, about Arlong and Luffy coming up to her, putting the hat on her and saying like, you know, I'm going to take care of it. I feel like that was significantly better in the anime compared to the live action version because it's such an impactful scene. It's like Nami was part of their crew and, you know, Luffy saw her as a friend it kind of gets betrayed by her they realize you know like she's not really trying to betray them but you know we got to help her it's a very vulnerable moment for nami and i feel like that's where nami really becomes nami that you know beloved straw hat and i feel like the anime it's so much more like painful because you can tell like the years of abuse that Nami's taken compared to the show where I don't have that same feeling. For the most part, basically up until the Baratier, everything is mostly the same as the anime version. Just maybe a few things are a little bit out of order and making them paste a little bit better. Which, speaking of pacing, I feel the pacing in the show is significantly better than the anime. Well, of course it probably had to be because, you know, the anime for East Blue is quite long. And to condense that down into eight hours is a pretty tall task. If you've seen the show, you probably know exactly what's going to happen all the way up until the Baratier, which is where they kind of change things. I mean, up until this point, they kind of changed the littler things, like when they're fighting Kuro, they're fighting him inside of the mansion, which I think in the show they were fighting him outside. But then you get to the Baratier where they completely drop Don Krieg. I mean, he's in it, but he gets like killed off by Mihawk in like two seconds, which I do quite like that they, you know, kind of explain as to why Mihawk's there because like he gets called up by Garp. Which is a very interesting thing because in the beginning it was mainly just Smoker hunting them down. And uh, Garp wasn't even mentioned for like the longest time. So I find it very interesting that Garp is like kind of the first real marine that is following 
the Straw Hats. I really enjoy uh, Garp as well. I thought he was just kind of fun as the granddad that just wants to track down his grandson to just see how tough he is. So going back to the Baratier, they change out Don Krieg for Arlong, which, I mean, in the grand scheme, it makes sense because, you know, Arlong is obviously the main villain of the East Blue. Surprisingly, the Baratier is like remarkably unscathed from any battle, like, Basically, nothing really happens there too much. I think they handled Sanji pretty well for that arc too, just because he's not maybe so lovey-dovey as he is in the anime. I, I really like him. I think he's fun. I think he is a cool dude. I love his little snide remarks to Zoro half the time. And just partially, I really like, you know, cooking, and it was kind of fun to get little cooking shots with him. Going into the finale, they did a really good job with like prosthetics for the fishmen because they pretty much gave it all like real makeup. I mean, I don't know exactly how much of it is CG. I mean, if it is CG, it's really good looking. Which speaking of CG, I feel like most of the attacks and stuff look really good in this. I feel like the biggest tell is once you get to like Chopper because he would be like the next straw hat joining the crew. And what is Chopper going to look like? and particularly like other people down the line like Brooke, Frankie, uh, Jean Bay. What the heck are they gonna look like? I thought this season was for sure going to end with them entering the Grand Line, especially for how many times they mention it in the series about going to the Grand Line. And especially like one of the final scenes of the season has Nami like, I don't get what the directions on this map are saying. like. We're going up a mountain, so that's where I was like, oh, they're for sure gonna go into the Grand Line. But in the back of my head, I was like, in the show, before they went to the Grand Line, they stopped at Logtown, and, you know, you had a battle with Smoker, you get the introduction of Dragon, and obviously I was like, okay, we finished the battle with Arlong, they're immediately going to the Grand Line, are we not doing Logtown? And sure enough, you know, the season ends before they even get to Reverse Mountain and try and go into the Grand Line and you get like a little post cred scene with Smoker. Just the atmosphere of it and, you know, even the view of his back, he looks pretty cool. I really like Smoker. I think he's kind of a fun early villain because, you know, none of the Straw Hats could really do anything about him because they hadn't had hockey or any of that yet. I'm just kind of curious as to who they're going to get to play Smoker, and he better have like a freaking gravelly, smoky voice, because I really like the dub version of his voice. It sounds like moi, real nice. But overall, I would be excited for a season two, which it seems like that's about to happen, because they're saying that they could probably get out in 2024, which is kind of doubtful with all the strike stuff that's going on. And it also makes me additionally hopeful for the live action version of My Hero Academia. I think they're doing Sword Art Online now. What the flip is Netflix doing to get all these live action animes? Either way, leave your guys' thoughts about the live action version of One Piece in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you for watching. This is Drago, signing out.